Hi guys, Brian the Scary Lion back with another video and today we're doing something a little different. For a little while now, me, Ian and Tom have been talking about then getting something like this all together and this is basically a little pay-per-view of what we would set up for WWE vs the Indies. Like I said, we've been talking a lot about it lately, but last night we sat down for hours on end actually trying to come up with the perfect way to organise all this while keeping it so that it's not too obvious uh, because, let's be honest, things like John Cena vs Kenny Omega, they would be put on a card like this more than likely because it's, you know, the biggest from each side really. But with this, we kind of wanted to keep it a little bit more surprising, a little bit more outside the box, matches that people probably typically won't think of. So with that being said, let's actually move on to what I am calling Battle of the Brands. So with something like this, WWE would more than likely be taking control over it, so it does mean that, we'd be, that we would be starting out with a pre-show. And on the pre-show, the first match that we've actually got is a four-team tag team match. The people involved would be the Usos, Phoenix and Pentagon, the Briscoe Brothers and Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly from the Undisputed Era. I just feel like everybody would be able to mesh well here, especially the Usos and Phoenix and Pentagon. I feel like those, those two teams would really put on great offense against each other. Adding in the Briscoe Brothers and the Undisputed Era gives it more of a technical wrestling side as well as just straight up high flying. So I just feel like all of it would mesh well together. The winners of this match I would put as the Usos. The Usos are incredible. Uh, don't get me wrong, all of the teams in this match are incredible. But I just feel like the Usos have got the edge on the other teams. Uh, this match should last roughly around 20 to 22 minutes. The next match on the card is a pretty interesting one for me. And it's a triple threat street fight between Kevin Owens, Eddie Edwards and Naito. All three are incredibly gifted. Eddie Edwards, put him in a street fight, he just looks like a psycho. He's completely psycho and very unpredictable. He would bring a lot into this match. Kevin Owens, I feel like the resiliency from Kevin would work amazing in this match. Kevin Owens taking a full on beating, but still pushing on and pushing on and pushing on. But here we would have Night Owen. It comes back to who's the most gifted athlete here. If you've ever seen a Naito match, you'll know what I'm talking about. The guy is incredible. But for this match, we'll have it lasting a little bit longer than the first match, but not too much. Uh, around about 25 minutes, maybe. Just to get that little bit more time for full brutality, really. So with that done, we now move on to the main show. And for this, we really racked our brains because we thought, we need to have a really good opening match to get the crowd all fired up on the main show. Uh, so for this we went with Seth Rollins versus Jay Lethal. Jay Lethal has just uh, became the longest reigning Ring of Honor champion with collective days. Also his ring presence and in-ring talent are unbelievable. And so I feel like matching him up with somebody else who I feel like is unbelievable in-ring uh, with the presence and the talent is Seth Rollins. I feel like these two could really go at it, really get the crowd involved. That That's the big selling point for this, really getting the crowd involved in this match. I feel like it would just be a draw, a very good draw for the fans. The winner of this match we would have as Seth Rollins. In my opinion, he is the more gifted superstar, but it's not just that. Um, with Jay Lethal's character, I don't think WWE would even be open to letting him win this match. Mainly down to the fact that he's got that whole Randy Savage character and everything. I don't think WWE would really let him get away with winning. Again, this match should go on for around about 25 minutes. Maybe a little bit longer. Um, but time management on this was incredibly hard to figure out. So the next match that we have on the card is an Iron Woman match. 60 minutes, Charlotte Flair versus Tessa Blanchard. In my mind, the two greatest women in wrestling at the moment. I know a lot of people might disagree, but in aspects of pure talent in WWE, I don't think anybody really matches up to Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair's been around wrestling her whole life and you can see in the ring just how much it actually means to her and just how much hard work and dedication she actually puts into it. 
There are a lot of people who think she wouldn't be where she was if it wasn't for Rick, but I highly disagree. She is phenomenal, and I believe she's earned everything that she's got at the minute. Maybe being treated like a little bit of a Roman Reigns, always getting put in the title picture and things like that. But that doesn't take away from how good she actually is. Tessa Blanchard, on the other hand, on the indie circuit, is unbelievable. Like, I actually think she, sh she should be one of these who are unstoppable, gone on a fucking long, long, long undefeated reign. Uh, obviously, <laughs> it, it's not happened. It, it's not going to happen, I don't believe. Tessa Blanchard is absolutely phenomenal. Um, so I believe I would have Tessa win this match, but I don't want Tessa to win like a pure landslide. I want it to be so close, coming down to the final few minutes, well, the final few seconds really, of this Iron Man match and have uh, have it at 4-4 and then finally Tessa Blanchard just, just gets that pinfall against Charlotte to pick up the win. Moving on from that, we'll have a match that WWE don't actually put on. This is a match that we usually see on um, Impact and it's the uh, six man X Division match. For this we've got Chris Sabin, Ricochet, Mustafa Ali, Matt Seidel, Pete Dunne and Will Ospreay. Originally in this match we did have Zack Sabre Jr. but I decided to take him out and replace him with Will Ospreay because I just feel like Will Ospreay would be more of a fit in here than Zack Sabre Jr. I don't know what it was that gave me that feeling but there you go. All of these men have jaw dropping talent. They could pull a move literally out of nowhere and you'd just be sat in your seat like what the fuck did I just see. So to put all of them collectively into this match you could have amazing spots in this match like so many amazing spots. I think this was the one that we we all really agreed on who we think should win this match. Um, and we all went for Pete Dunne. Like, there was no argument really on who we thought should win this. Pete Dunne is absolutely fucking incredible. He is probably the best talent that NXT UK currently have. I know NXT UK have a lot of great talent, but Pete Dunne proves time and time and time again why he's deserving of holding the championship for as long as he has and to fucking keep it going. Uh, this match should go on for roughly 35 minutes. Mm, uh, time wise for this one is very, very iffy. 35 minutes should be enough time to get to get at least one spot in from each of the superstars. And next we move on to another women's match and it's a fatal four way match uh, between Britt Baker, Alexa Bliss, Kyrie Sane and Ali. For me having these four put in together works really well. It's the way they utilise each of their attributes. Uh, I just feel like meshing well together would be key in this. Also when it comes to the in ring ability they all pretty much match up. Uh, I believe they are all as good as each other. People might disagree, but I believe these four are really as good as each other. For the winner of this match, I would put it as Britt Baker. Britt Baker walking out with a win against the other three women. For this one, I just really look at it like, who do I feel is going to give more in this match? And for me, it is Britt Baker. Don't get me wrong, the others are going to put a lot into this match, but I just feel like Britt Baker would put a lot more into this. If you disagree, let me know. But this match should go on for roughly around 18 to 20 minutes. Not too long of a match, but not too short of a match. And the next match that we move on to is going to have a little bit of a backstory here. It's a 3 versus 3 lethal lockdown match between The New Day and Kenny Omega and The Young Bucks. This one's more like a little bit of fun for the fans. Or maybe you're a fan of Up Up Down Down. If you are, you will know about the ongoing rivalry between Kenny Omega and Austin Creed. The way it started out was just uh, Kenny and Austin, but it ended up pushing forward and developing, involving the Young Bucks and then and involving uh, Kofi Kingston and Big E. So I feel like this would just be a little bit of fun for the fans, but towards the end, I feel like it would get a bit more serious because I would have the winner be Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks because the Revival get involved. At first the Revival come out and we think that they're going to be teaming up with the New Day on behalf of WWE to take out 
Kenny and the Young Bucks, but instead the Revival turn on WWE, attack the New Day, and leave to go to AEW. This match should go on for roughly about 35 minutes, uh, make this one a bit more of a long-lasting match, but not putting it on for too long, we'll get to why. Uh, the next match that we've put in is a bit of just a filler match. It's uh, Matt Riddle versus Zack Sabre Jr. It's one of those, it'll be a great match to watch, it'll be very exciting, but it's more like it's just there to fill in time between the match that we've just seen and the main event match that we're just going to get on to. Have quite a lot of action in here, it's only going to last around about 30 minutes, but the winner walking away will be Matt Riddle. Now we move on to the big one. This is the main event of the card. And this is a 40 person Royal Rumble to see who's going to be declared the best in the world. I know we had the best in the world tournament, but fuck you Shane McMahon, that wasn't a real best in the world tournament. Don't give a fuck, fuck you Shane. And you might have noticed I said person. The reason I say that is because I don't want this to be limited to just men and I don't want it to be limited to just women. I want this to be fully inclusive. Anyone can get involved. Here's the rush part, right? Because we actually came up with a list of 40 entrants and we put when we want them to come in. So, this took us a lot of time. Here are all of the entrants. Sammy Callahan, Nikki Cross, Brandy, Eli Drake, Elias, John Moxley, Rosemary, Braun Strowman, Baron Corbin, Ty Dillinger, Austin Aries, Killer Cross, Bray Wyatt, Tanahashi, Jake Christ, Rey Mysterio, Shayna Baszler, Tony Storm, Humberto Carrillo, Tennille Dashwood, Brett Baker, Adam Cole, Marty Skrull, Ember Moon, Viper, Y2J, Drew McIntyre, Dakota Kai, Andrade, Okada, Ronda Rousey, Alistair Black, Ibushi, Cody, Becky Lynch, Gail Kim, Finn Balor as the Demon King, uh, Tamatonga, Roman Reigns and Kenny Omega. Literally we sat for so long sitting going through who we want to put in. And we even had little moments when it was like, right, we need to take this person out to put this person in. Maybe we've got too much WWE and things like that. But we ended up finally coming to that decision. We even broke it down to who would make it to the final four. And the way we did this was to say who each of us wanted to win. For Tom, he picked Gil Kim to win it. Have the former Knockouts champion and former WWE superstar, to be fair, uh, before being released. Uh, have her win. Uh, for me personally, I thought Shayna Baszler should win it. Um, it just gave that little bit of extra to Shayna Baszler that she need. Well, she doesn't even need it, but I think she deserves it. Um, Ian went for Okada. Not a bad pick. Like, actually, a really good pick. Okada could obliterate most of the people in this match. Tom and Ian kind of went for a funny little thing here. Have Britt Baker make it to the final four. Because uh, have Adam Cole eliminate someone uh, to make it the final five. And then he stood up against the ropes going, Adam Cole, baby. And then Britt Baker pushes him over. Like, we don't see anything like saying, oh, they are in a relationship and all that lot. We don't have any of that. But we have just like the little tip of the hat to the fans. It's just a little funny thing to put in there. But after talking about it for a while, we ended up deciding that Shayna Baszler was the right choice to walk away with a victory. Have her be full-on dominant in this and have her just destroy. This match should go on for just under two hours. We've said around about one hour, 48 minutes. Uh, which means this full pay-per-view, including the pre-show, would go on for like seven hours. But it'd be well worth it because it'd be a full night of great wrestling but there you go there's the full card of what i would actually put on for wwe versus the indies uh this is only really a part one i want to do this every year uh and like i say i don't want to make it obvious matches i want to put my own little ones out there and come up with a good reasoning behind them let me know what you guys think if there was any matches that you thought were bad or any you would like to include 
let me know down in the comments. Uh, maybe you want to change someday or whatever. I don't know. It's just good to hear. And I, I, I hope you like this video. And if you did like it, don't forget to butt fuck that like button. Please.